tonight has a question. This will go to you first, Robert. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and she wants to know, as a first-time voter, congratulations, what can Republicans on this stage stand for and do that will broaden your appeal among the young voters where we have a deficit, it seems like? Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, that is a great question. And my uh, daughter Lauren uh, is voting. My son Rob is voting for the first time as he has turned uh, 19. And uh, it's, it's the, that future that we're all talking about when we talk about the economy. There's, if we just do nothing, just keep kicking the can down the road, we are passing on trillions of dollars of debt and we're, we're passing on all these huge programs, the Social Security and the and Medicare, they're going to go bankrupt and we're just passing on to our kids. Even beyond that, I have had a first row seat at our infrastructure, and we're accumulating billions of dollars of maintenance costs in our infrastructure that we're not taking care of. So we're also handing them the car keys and saying, here, here's a few billion dollars of maintenance costs for the next few years too. That's just immoral and, and it's wrong. So the, the path out of there, as we've been talking about, is balancing that budget, starting to reduce that debt, now and even look for some creative ways, uh, maybe uh, selling the oil that's under federal lands. Let's sell that oil and, and take it against the debt. Let's sell some of these federal lands. Why are we arguing over lands in Nevada? Let's sell some of that federal land and, and reduce the debt. Whatever we gotta do so that the young people can have that opportunity that, uh, that we've had. We don't wanna be the first ones to pass off a worse America to our kids. Thanks. Brent. Get you a high paying job when you get out of college. I think that that's what all the kids want today. Uh, we cut regulations, we cut red tape, we make improvements in our educational system, we improve our tax climate. I had a bill that said that if you graduate from an Iowa college and you stay in the state of Iowa, that you pay no income tax for 10 years to keep our investment from going outside outside of the state. But my biggest priority is to do something about this debt that these people that have been irresponsible, these generations before, have passed on to all of you. And hopefully I'll get this question again. Do you have a little bit of time? I have three non-negotiables for lowering the debt and cutting spending. That's the support system for the seniors, the support system for the veterans, the support system for the disabled. We prioritize our services. We do. I did it in the city of Irvindale, and we start making some tough decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Joe. That's a great question. I'm a teacher. See, the young people, all they want is the truth. Someone they can trust. You see, I've taught for 26 years. I've been a coach all my life. When I sit my students around me, I tell them the truth. That's what they want to hear. I can't promise them a job, but I can tell them the truth, what it's going to take to get the job. So you've got to believe in the person. Believe what he says and believe in the person. Trust what he says and trust in the person. See, when I sit those young people in front of me, Mr. G tells the truth. That's what the American people want, the truth. They might not like the truth, but they need to hear the truth. June 3rd, Joe granted it. Thank you. Matt? Well, I, I think a lot has already been said, and I would echo that. You know, when I grew up, my parents taught me that if you work hard, you can do anything. You could even become President of the United States. Haven't we all been taught that? But is that going to continue? <clears throat> Kids want to have that American dream. That they could be the next inventor of, of like an Apple iPad or, or be able to create a company like Microsoft or become President of the United States. But they won't be able to do that if we don't fix this fiscal problem. Because that is what's going to keep them from getting a job. And I, I have to be honest with you, I look at my five kids and I'm concerned that if we don't do something, we're going to rob them and all our kids and grandkids of the American dream. Let's send somebody to Washington 
will fight to fix this fiscal problem. Thank you. Thank you. Monty? So how do we attract young folks to this party? Well, I was going to say, you know, maybe come up with a cool magic trick or something. Somebody already did that. So, you know, I think it's about optimism. I think it's about tr telling the truth, but in an optimistic way. I, I don't know about you, but I think that the, the, the younger voters that are coming up are optimistic about their future. They're really pretty great kids if you go out and see what they're doing. It's pretty amazing the innovative and entrepreneurial ideas they have. So I don't think we want to approach this election with a strident tone. A tone that says, if you don't agree with me on 100% of the issues, you're no good, get out of my party. I think we need to approach it with a thoughtful tone, an optimistic tone that says, hey, let's find the areas we can work on, and let's we'll sit down and work on those 85% of the areas, and then we'll go have a cup of coffee and discuss the other 15%, and I'll explain why you're wrong. But, but uh, I, I tell you, I get a little nervous when I run into older voters who say, you know, Monty, I'm glad you're doing this, but I've given up. We're on the road to Greece. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody wants to work anymore. Uh, we can't change it. I'm just going to sit on the couch, pop the top on a beer, and watch reality TV. If that's what happens, the liberals win and we lose, and I think the young folks are not that way. They want us to fight. Thank you. David. I think you need to be able to articulate to this new generation why conservatism is cool and why it works. We have to articulate why Ronald Reagan is cooler than Barack Obama, or why Chuck Grassley is cooler than George Clooney. Listen, we, we have history on our side and we have the answers. It's better to have more of your money, keep more of your tax dollars, than be dependent on a government program, which may, in some ways, entrap you into, into dependency for generations to come. Why it's cooler to have a job and show something for your day's work than not do anything. Why it's cooler to have an energy policy where there's a, a, a choice of fuels and jobs, and you're not, uh, you, you're not susceptible to be blackmailed by foreign countries who control your energy and your oil. So we have to articulate and uh, we have to tell them about history and remind them about the founding of this nation and how freedom and opportunity made us what is great.